Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another stream, and welcome back to another chapter in the video series, building this guy right here, that is the F-15E Strike Eagle by Great Wall Hobbies. Of course, we're building it as an R-O-F-K, or sorry, um, R-O-A-F-K, um, uh, F-15K, Slam Eagle. That's the Republic of Korea Air Force F-15K. K is for Korean, obviously. Still got some painting to do on it, so that's what I'm continuing to do. Although it's just a little bit, um, as you can see, I've already got most of the masking done that I need to do. I've got to paint some silver around the engines here and on the bottom too. So I'm just getting prepared to do that. Um, yeah, so I have my airbrush already ready to go, which is convenient considering I just finished uh, doing a little test on some chrome and clear coats. Um, that video is coming soon. Um, here's a preview. <laughs> if you're watching my channel, you'll see there's going to be a video talking about this chrome paint uh, coming up soon. And uh, so, yeah, you can watch for that. Um, might get the remainder of it done today, I'm, but I might wait till tomorrow to do it, which means. I might upload the video tomorrow, um, but it might not be until Monday. We'll see how the editing goes on that and stuff like that. And I just got to the very end of my masking tape, which is fine, because I have lots of tape left over anyway, so. Got lots of tape. Not anything to worry about that. So, yeah, we're getting closer to final assembly time. Um, I'll grab my other Tamiya tape here. We're getting closer to final assembly time. Um, it's all just this, you know, the neat little prep you need to do. The paint and stuff like that to get what you need. To get the look that you want. All that fun stuff. So it kind of goes along with the, well, it's part of modeling, <laughs> whether you call yourself a, a model builder, a model maker, whatever floats your boat. It's part of the, comes with the territory. Okay, so I think that's going to be plenty. I'm not going to have a huge amount of overspray anyway. Maybe just want to make sure I've got my control surfaces covered like I should. What's that saying? It's an old saying. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure or something like that. prevent the overspray than have to come back and fix it. Okay, I think that's plenty. Okay, so put this over here. What am I going to be painting at? What color am I going for? Well, the color I am going for, I'm going to be using the gloss aluminum, but I want to give it a little bit of variation, okay? And how am I going to get that variation? I'm going to be going with AK's Extreme Metal Burnt Metal. As you can see on the lid, that's what it looks like if you put it on thick and you just cover it. Okay? I'm not going to be doing that. I'll show you the look that I am going to be going for. And it's going to be something, something, i got to find my folder where it is now here. Um, there's the picture. I'll show you guys in a sec here. Okay, I actually have to change my views here. So if I get rid of this, it's going to pop. 
pop up there, but I'll show you the big picture. That's kind of the, the look I'm sort of going for. You see the variation in the silver. Like this is obviously a nice bright shiny silver, but then you've got this darker color here, darker along the edge on each side. Obviously this is part of the nozzle, so that's not what I'm painting right now. But that's kind of what I'm going for. I don't know if I'm going to go totally, totally that route or not. I would go that, that type of heavy um, discoloration and all that, you know. Um, it's, um, yeah, like I said, I don't think I'm going to go that heavy on it, but... I want to get some little variation in that. I just don't want to be a nice brand new looking silver color, right? That's not what I want. I am going with gloss aluminum. Could go light gunmetal. It'd be a similar color, similar tone, maybe just a little bit darker. Looking at it now, I think maybe I am going to go with the light gunmetal. <laughs> Change my mind right in halfway. Sure, we get all the pigment from the bottom off of that jar. Okay, so we got all the pigment off the bottom of that jar. Huh, I got to replace the needle in my airbrush after cleaning it. That was uh, that's a very good thing to do. It's going to be hard to. It's going to be pretty hard to paint anything if you've got no needle in your airbrush. I don't really need the handle on there right now. Okay. Um, I believe I want to thin this up a little bit, so I'm going to pick a, a cup here that's going to be dry. Neither of those are dry, so... I want to thin this out. So looking at it in here, it looks like it might be a little too dark. It is a bit too dark. Even though it's light gunmetal, it's still too dark. So, let's pour a little bit of this back. See, the aluminum is a little too light. So let's do a mix. Let's get her somewhere in between. Somewhere in between the aluminum and the gunmetal. I think I don't really mix all that well. As you can see all kinds of swirls. Of course, when you atomize it, it's going to change things. So, let's get some thinner in there and thin this down. Roughly 50%. Just going to eyeball it a little bit. There we go. Okay. You guys probably see me reach down and grab my thinner from the floor here all the time. And you might be thinking, all that thinner that you use to clean your airbrush and clean your brushes, and now you're using it to mix a paint? Well, actually, no. Um, oh, hi, Mega Boy. Uh, no, I don't actually do that. I have two different cans of thinner. One I use for cleaning my brushes and cleaning my airbrush out and stuff like that. And another one I use for mixing the paints or to adding the paint to thin it out. The one that I used to, that I just added, that's just pure. There's nothing else in it. It's pure, 100% thinner. It's not mixed with any paint. It's never had any pigment added to it, ever. So, that's the main difference. So, I've got a little bit darker aluminum here now. I've got way more than I really need to do this. But, good enough. Okay, let's change the camera, and we'll do that. Let's get this going here. All right, on my painting can, I'm kind of blocking it off with the chat window. 
but I'll move a little forward so you can see. I know some guys like to watch this stuff. Just do it kind of light, nothing real special. So that's that. So we're going to let that sit for a minute and dump this out into here. It's one of those things, you know, you mix up so much paint and then you only, you only use a fraction of it. And because I've mixed it, this, I can't put it in either one of those two now because that would be a bad thing. So it would be a very bad thing. Okay, so pour that out. Grab my See, I have this one marked cleaning. It's my dirty thinner. <laughs> Even though it says cleaning on it, it's my dirty thinner. So I'm gonna leave this out just for now. I'm gonna do a little check here. It is dry to the touch. Lovely to me, a paint dries so fast. But this top part, I think I'm gonna leave. It's fine. I don't think I need to do anything with it. Um, I think the top part is going to look perfectly fine, just nice and silver. It's the bottom part that needs to have that little bit of a burnished look to it. So the question is, do I do the whole thing? Do I just do a section of it? I just want to do it subtle. Subtle. I think maybe I'm going to do from here back. Okay, I'll leave this part here fine. Actually, let me check my reference photo again here, just to make sure. Uh, where are we? Not that folder. It's this folder. Yes. Checking my reference photo here again. They actually have... The front part here is darker, and the edges, where this doesn't look so bad at all or from here back looks fine until we get to these guys. Well, these guys look fine too. So from here to here looks good. So I'm, I want to leave this section out and only do here, here. Kind of like a around the, around the world kind of thing. So I don't want to really touch these. Okay. So that's what I'm going to try to do. It's not really get into this area here at all. Now, of course, let's keep in mind we have these guys that go on. Okay. Um, where'd my window go? There it is. Keep in mind we have these two guys that go on. And they go on like this. And they cover a lot of this up. Okay. Look at that. It's covered up this entire section here. This whole section is covered. Right? Let's line up that first hole. Where are we here? Where's my holes? There's where it lines up. Okay? Now, of course, the tape is preventing that pin from going in. But that's where this is going to go. Okay? So it's going to cover that up. A good 90% of it. But I can still put a little bit of that burnt on here. And I can go across with it. Okay? So that's what I'll do. Now, I kind of want to do a hard line across here, so let's um, grab this. I'm going to do the test here. Is that going to pull it up? No. Another thing you can do is this. Get a little bit of oil from your hands on there. Now it won't stick quite so, but quite so harshly. So I'm just going to line this up. Sorry for my head in the way. In a way, I, well, I guess I kind of am painting the engines right now, aren't I? Anyway. Okay, so there's that. There we go. So this stuff is done very nicely in that you don't have to thin this at all. You can spray it right out of the jar. Funny enough, you can actually brush it right out of the jar. 
Um, it's really well done. They've done this. The pigment does settle at the bottom of the jar, so you do have to shake them really well. They got a whole line of these extreme metal colors, ranging from brass to aluminum to, well, this one is burnt metal. You get that kind of a, it's almost a coppery look to it. So put my needle back in. Feels good. Make sure all the silver's out, all the thinner's gone out of there. There we go, good. So, because we're doing just a little bit, and I'm not laying it on thick, I'm doing a light coat. I'm not gonna, I don't really wanna change the color. I just want it to be subtle. So, I only need a little bit. And that'll be fine. This stuff dries pretty quick too. I don't know, I think it's enamel. This isn't a lacquer, it's enamel. All right, switch to the painting camera. Bingo, here we are. So, like I said, I just want to do subtle. Just subtle. So I'm going to go far away and I'm just going to go light. Very light. As soon as I start to see some color change, pretty much good. So, I'm not sure if you guys can really see the difference or not, because I, like I said, I went really subtle with it. It's just adding a little bit of that kind of a, a brownish tinge. Very, very subtle. So, let that dry for a minute or two while I clean, them, or like clean my brush yet again. Okay, let's have a look at it. Let's pull all this paint off. Paint. <laughs> pull all this masking tape off. We'll have a look at our engines. See our results. So obviously I'm going to have to re-glue my little piece of photo etch that goes on right there. Um, but here you go. Let me change the camera and we'll have a look at this now. Here's our top part. Okay. And here's where the photo etch needs to be go, go back on. Um, but there's the top part of our engine. Okay. And now we flip her over and here's the underneath. And you can see that slight, just a slight tonal difference there. A little bit warm tone to it. And that's what I wanted to go for. Of course, there's going to be a lot of weathering going on underneath this, but I want to have a good base of a different tone completely on those, those parts. And I did a little bit less over on the side. You can see I get the right angle. You can see it's a little, it's subtle, right? That's what I wanted to go for on that, okay? That's just what I wanted to go for. So, now, let's get back to actually assembling this thing, okay? Let's go back to building this plane. I'm going to take my piece of photo edge off of this tape. Hopefully not bending it. There we go. Get off. Okay. So I'm just going to put this down over here for now. And I'll deal with that another time. Going back to the instructions. We kind of have to go back a few pages, don't we? So we go back, we've assembled the two parts of the fuselage, obviously. We've put the can, the this little top part in, and we've put the nose part in. That page is done. We've already done that. The next step was to actually put the intakes in and the engines, okay? And put the little piece of photo etch on the very tip of the tail, right in between the two engines. That's already there. That's there, right there. Um, ah, thanks, you, Ella. 
nice to see you again and uh, so yes we're we're there and uh, we got to put our intakes on so we're gonna grab our intakes here there is left and right we've got this little lip that sticks out on the one and that goes on the outside so that's how you can tell lefts and rights on this on these so other than that you just line it up and you put them in there so let's do that you see that's not quite lined up as it's sticking out there let's switch the camera so you can see here okay so you can see it's not quite lined up that's going to tuck inside and be in there and then we do that we set it down and there you go now that's in there good that's in its home where it needs to be. So I'm going to grab my extra thin and we will set the glue in there and be in our home permanently. tight there we go so that's one so we grab our other one and we do the same thing put it in there make sure it's tight there we go Hindsight, um, maybe something I should have addressed a little bit before and I'd never bothered was the fact that there is just a little bit of a gap um, along here. There's just a little bit. You've got a little bit of a gap here. Um, this is nice and tight. This is nice and tight here, but there is a little bit of a gap here. Our panel line is going to be a little bit wider, uh, and here also, um, but I don't think it's really that noticeable. It's not too bad at all, really. So, our intakes are on. Finally. Finally on. Woohoo. Looking like an F-15. What else on this page? We can put the nose piece on if we wanted to. But I kind of want to leave that for last, our, our nose piece for the canopy. Um, but we haven't even put that piece in there yet. So we're going to wait. That's going to wait. Um, engines, we're not putting those in yet. So we've got more painting and weathering to do. The PE's in. Let's flip the page. Flip the page. We have the main canopy, which is assembled. It's right here. It's ready to go, but this doesn't get... That's not a permanent thing for me. So that just sits and waits. We've got the air brake, which is already on. The air brake is already there. Um, they show you if having the air brake down and the canopy down or open, whichever you want to do. It's up to you. Okay. Flip the page. We have elevators and we have tail fins. Well, the elevators are not glued in, but the tail fins are. So, let's have a look at our tail fins. We already have them painted. When I painted this whole thing, got our tail fins here. Okay. So, they are left and right, as you can see by the tabs. You've got a long tab and a short tab. You've got a short hole and a long hole. So, they have to be lined up like that. And they go in just like this. And there you go. And that's that. They are set. Done. Okay. Now, why aren't I gluing them in yet? Because I still want to have the option of flipping this thing over. Okay. And not put pressure on these little pegs. Right. That's why I'm not gluing these on yet. 
because this is a bit fragile this little guy here he's fragile and I don't want to flip this guy over and put a bunch of pressure on that little point so those can wait meanwhile we have landing gear landing gear I have to put a bunch of decals on okay so the landing gear has to wait because as we show this little guy came with the kit okay this comes with our kit and we have this page too so you get to see where all the sorry all the decals and where they go okay fun stuff okay but another thing they show you is it in this book no if we flip ahead we're putting the landing gear bay doors on here they show some color call outs now, obviously we're just doing the white um, get to assembling our weapon pods those I think I can actually get to gluing on now ah which reminds me just reminded me one little piece I needed to paint and that's these guys here I need to give these guys some color and I'm going to paint them uh, light gunmetal actually I think a good one would be the titanium. These guys basically, these are little things that stick out back here and here, and they basically take the place of these, of these little vents, except they stick out farther. And so I think the titanium is going to be a good color. I don't have a ball bearing in this. What's the matter with me? I put ball bearings in all of my Tamiya paints. just help break up the pigment. See, we can't even hear it right now yet. Because it's stuck in the pigment at the bottom of the jar. Ah, oh, there we go. Now we're moving. <laughs> See, it, it just takes that extra little bit to get it going. And then, I use my thing. If you ever wonder what I'm doing when I'm reaching down like this, I'll show you. Just make sure my glue is closed. I have one of these things down here. I have one of these. And what this does is it does that. And it really vibrates and shakes up the paint. And yeah, so I have one of those. And that helps really mix it up well. And now you can hear that ball bearing flowing freely in there. I'm just going to use my brush and I'm just going to paint those really quickly here. Because I forgot to do it earlier. Just give these guys a little bit of color. These are supposed to be basically that same color as everything else down there. And I think the titanium having that little bit of a tinge of brown in it is going to be a good color match for what I've done down there. Okay. 
So they want me to glue those little pieces in on here before actually installing them onto the plane. So it's a little bit tacky but almost dry. for that. So let's have a look at this. Where it came off the sprue, no big deal. So this is just going to go in like right here. I think that's the right direction. Let's look at the instructions. So there's no actual marked out spot on the fuselage, on the exact spot where this is supposed to go. But there is this tiny little lip in here. And I know that it's going to stick out. So it needs to sit like right there. And it's going to stick out just that little bit right there like that. And that's basically how it's going to sit. Just like that. So, there we go. Where am I going with my brush? <laughs> Now let's do a test fit here. Looking good. As you can see, it just sticks out a little bit there. So we'll press this in. We're going to hold it down. Some glue. Running on a whole lot of different spots because it's not a super tight fit, so you don't have you kind of have a little bit of gaps everywhere along this thing. Not that it's a, a bad fit, it fits, it does fit good. It's, it's, uh, it's tight, it sits where it's supposed to. But if you were to compare this to the real plane, you would say, hey, how come there's also such a big gap? And on the real plane, there isn't one. Say, well, because this is just a model kit and it's not the real plane. So, sorry if I'm doing a lot of this off the camera or out of the camera's view, but I need to be able to see exactly where I'm gluing. Duke always says, shut up compressor. Disrespecting his poor compressor that serves him so well. Okay. So need to hold this for a second because the back kind of wants to lift off a little bit. We got it. 
it's holding. And I think we're good. Okay. So, put this down. No, we're not good. I'm going to have to hold it. We'll do that. Of course, doing that, it's lifting up the front. Why are you doing this to me? Thing that makes me wish Tamiya made this particular kit. <laughs> because you know, Tamiya, their fit is just so much better than everyone else's, really. And I wish, I also wish you could hold things as good with a clamp as you can with your fingers. But that's just not reality, is it? Okay, how are you doing? This is what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to wait until this dries, and then once this is cured, I can clamp this down and glue the back end. That's what's going to happen, okay? So, let's put this down, and let's get this guy over here. This guy's going to go in here like this. Put some glue on him. Once again, I'm not going to bother even bother putting glue back here in this section. I'm going to do the front first. Assemble first and then paint, you, it's a bit of an advantage because it's at this point where you might discover you've got gaps that you want to put some putty in. Right? And since I've already got it painted, if I put putty on it, then that's something I have to paint again.
Now, is that the end of the world? No, not really. It's just going over a step that you've already done, redoing it, right? But I find assembling the whole thing and then pa and then painting it is just too much. It's too much. Because it requires so much more masking to not paint certain parts that you don't want to paint. Okay, so we'll sit this down for a minute. I'm just going to put it down over here. Let that sit and let that glue kind of set up a little bit. Okay, so we have those pods. These pods are now installed. We've got the, the arrestor hook which I did glue on before, but due to masking and painting, I didn't want to have to mask this, so I just pulled it off. And so I'll install that later on. I've got a couple little fins here to go on the bottom, but we don't even have the landing gear on there yet. So if I put these fins on here now and I put the plane down, they're just going to go snap. So I don't want that to happen. Ordnance, otherwise known as weapons. Um, we have our missiles. I've got the missiles painted and they are ready to be installed and they install onto our fuel tanks, which I guess they're painted enough that I can get rid of my little holder here. Clean up our little nubs and get these kind of ready to be installed. I find the tops of these things, usually where the mold is, they come together and you've got a bit of a seam that I always, almost always wind up having to shave down to make flat. And that's not, and that is true for these. Also, it takes a strip of paint off of that and allows it to adhere to the plastic a little better. So, yeah, something almost all, almost all workies wind up having to do. Do I always have to? No, but almost always. Often enough that it's a thing. Often enough that it is a thing. Okay. So with that done, I did mention decals, didn't I? Before putting these on, there's almost always decals you need to install. Another thing that I did, I deviated from the instructions. I don't normally do, but I did on this occasion. And what exactly did I deviate from? I'll show you. You'll see I have pods on each side. This is in the exact same way that they would have on an F-15C. Okay, pods on each side. In the instructions, I'll flip it around so it's right side up for you. This kit only comes with two missiles. It comes with a single AIM-120 and an AIM-9L. One of each. That's what this kit comes with for weapons. And so they want you to put an AIM-9L on this side of this pod and put an empty partial um, pod on this side and then do the opposite on this side. Put an empty pod on this side and put the AIM-120 on this one. So the plane literally has, literally has one AIM-9 and on the other wing one AIM-120. And that's it. And that's all the missiles it has. Other than all the little GBUs that go underneath of it here on this page. Um, and that's it. And I thought, that's ridiculous. F-15s hold a lot more than that. There's one missile, one, two different types of missiles, one on this one, one on the other. 
I do have my other kit, the Academy kit, which has a lot of missiles in it. And so that's what I did. I grabbed two AIM-120s and I grabbed the two 9Xs, AIM-9Xs, not M AIM-9Ls, the two AIM-9Xs. And that's what I'm going to be putting on this plane. Boom and boom. And I'll have one of each on each wing and she'll be loaded up. And so that's what we're going to be doing with these. Okay. But as I mentioned now for a third time, there's decals to put on there. And I've got these little, our special little um, things that they call them. The targeting pod and the Sniper XR Advanced targeting pod. We need to put those together. I have them painted, and so here they are. This is one, and this is the other. I've got the pieces all painted for them. I just need to assemble them. So I need to grab off of the AAQ-13 tree, which is not that one, not that one. It's one of these guys. That's the AAQ-33. It's not that one. AAQ-14. This is going to be a 13. 13. Okay. So we're going to take this guy and we grab this little piece. Sorry, switch the camera again. Point. We grab this little piece. And we grab this piece. And we grab this piece. Okay. And we're done with this. my nub removal is good. Alright, so uh, this is going to go on like that. does, I think it's supposed to fit in there, but for some reason it doesn't want to. There we go. This guy goes on like this. They really aren't kidding when they want these to fit in tight. The tolerances are really tight. Alright, so that's this guy. He's done. Okay. Next, I have to move this out. We have this this guy. He's on the next page. And it's kind of strange how they suddenly switch from this style of diagrams to these for this page. They just suddenly switch. Dun, dun, dun. 
dun, 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 dun. So this is all off of the AAQ33 tree, which is this one, and I've already got them kind of assembled. So this piece here, that's this, two pieces assembled. We have to put a clear piece in here, okay? I do have that over here somewhere, right here, this guy. In his own little bag. All nice and special. Pull that staple out. So special it gets its own bag. Take this, and we're going to shove this into the end here. Now, which way is it supposed to go? It looks like it goes the other way around, like this. And it's going to go in just like that, okay? So, let's put a little bit of glue on there. take this piece and put it on here. It's going to go with the longer edge towards the back. Or should I say the pointy edge towards the back. It's such a tight fit, I almost don't need glue. All right, and then we're gonna take this piece from 14.3. That's AAQ14. I need AAQ4, oh it is, sorry. AAQ14 number three, that's this guy here. These other two pieces off of here, these two are not used. So you don't use these, this is now done. 
So, we just clean up our nubs. flat surface. Might as well do this now. All right. And now, long side down. This is gonna... <laughs> maybe not. It's funny, they show it with the long side towards this and then they show it the opposite way around. See that? And as I just discovered, the pins for this long side, they don't line up. They don't line up to the holes. But the short ones do. But the butt, the pins are a little too long. I can't actually get it all the way through. So I'm gonna have to trim these pins they're just a little too long. They're too long and they won't allow it to go flush. So, let's try that. That's perfect. Okay, so let's put a little glue on this. Nice 90 degrees. There we go. So there's our other weapon ball. It's kind of funny. It does look a little strange. Because you, you want to look at it like this, like that's the that's up. Because other weapons are usually the other way around where the thing is going down towards it. Where's our other one here? See how they're opposite? They're opposites. So when they're actually mounted on the plane, they're going to be hanging down. This is on that slant down. This is actually slanted the other way. That is really, really strange. Okay. Yeah, there we are. Um, yeah, that is really strange looking. Let's see on the next page just out of curiosity, what it's showing for the actual mounting, where that mounts on the plane. Yeah, they do. In this picture, they are the opposite. See that? They are opposites. They are opposite. It's really weird. You don't see that too often. The other weapon we have is these. So what I'm going to do is let's Let's start getting this assembled. See, we start with this, then we move to this, 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 and then we have it all fully done here. So let's just take a look at what's involved with that because there's a lot to do. Because I have all of these It's kind of funny, the label they have on these is GBU-39, which is the, the actual thing. They got color callouts, but I need to find the pieces. I need to find these pieces um, because I don't see them. Is this actually them? This looks like that. Where is this piece? Ah, oh, this. Okay, so... Let me see if I can figure this out. They're not giving me... See, we've got... They're not labeled as part number 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. That's it. But they're not labeled like that on, on the actual sheet. So, I am kind of guessing... On how this goes together. Okay, 
So we're gonna we're we're gonna be guessing here, guys, on how this actually assembles. Okay, so this is gonna be one. Let's have a look here. So this guy goes together with this. Like this. Although it doesn't want to fit in that hole. It does. Okay. We take that. But then we're going to take this guy and he goes in up top here. Like so. And then we have... So we wind up with, with that looking like this. And now we take these. These will go. Well, they go on top of this piece. Let's clean up our pieces. Clean up our nubs and actually glue it together. The book is calling out. For these to be painted in gunship gray, which is a little bit different than what I have on the actual plane. So I'm okay with that. I don't mind the weaponry being a slightly shaded, different shade of gray than what the plane is. I think in real life that's probably that's what happens. I mean, look at reference photos of. Sidewinder missiles. And you see, sometimes they're white, sometimes they're a light gray, sometimes they've got different shades of gray on them. You can get all kinds of different things going on on those. Okay, so these are supposed to go like this and mount up like that on there. Okay. that piece. I <laughs> got a little bit of glue on my finger and took my primer right off. And then this one literally goes on the other side. Like that. complicated little missile, you know. So do this one, get this one done, and then we're going to call it a day. Because i got to get ready to go out here. Okay. So we put that on. Get that kind of lined up as much as I can. I don't know how the missiles are supposed to go. That should be like that. I missed this nub. I need to clean this up. Okay. Make sure you clean up your nubs, kids. Okay. Okay, and finally, put this piece, um, yes, on here, like that. So there we have it. There's one. And I have a whole lot more to do. I have a whole lot of these to do. Okay, so there's one. But once we got that done and we're at this stage, which is this, this is right here. Okay, that's this guy. Boom. 
we have this to put together. Well, where are these? Well, I think that's what these are. Brew 61. Ah, yes. Brew 61. But it looks like we have to assemble these, put these two together. just for these two pieces. Big ugly nubs on these. are kind of, they're undergated, that's why. Come on. I'm trying to do this in time crunch now. And so these two go together so, <laughs> with nub marks cleaned up, of course. Now these two go together. So we're going to take this, and we're going to put this with two little pegs. We're actually, we line them up. There's little slots here. Oh, slots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we take one here, and we line it up with the little take our little pegs and line them up with the slots and we install it right there and we call that done and we're going to do that four times on this one pod just like that that's one. And we need to do that three more times on this one pod. Okay. Just like that. And that's why we got so many of these. Okay. And I've got another one here. Another one of these. Okay. And that's that. So, that's going to keep me busy <laughs> assembling these um, just to get them ready for paint. So, I don't have time to do that now. I'm going to have to do that later. So, what I do have time for now is to ask you guys to hit the like button and over here hit the subscribe and check out the description box and look at the links there to my YouTube and not to my YouTube to my Twitch and all that fun stuff 
to my Twitch and to my Instagram and yeah and follow me on those things and comment and talk to me and talk to me live and blah 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 all those things that I always ask you to do I want to thank you guys for watching I want to thank you for coming out thank you for all the support thank you for the comments that you guys are putting on my YouTube that's awesome I love to see those I love to interact with you guys even if it is only over YouTube um, thank you guys for watching thanks for coming out that's gonna be it for me for now and uh, I'll get to continuing on this later on um, so we'll see you on the next one